very, very good evening to you all and welcome down to this fan forum uh, tonight. Horrible weather, so we thank you all for making the effort to get down here. Uh, you should have, had, just to run through the programme for the evening, you should have all your questionnaire little slips to write your questions on there. If you can just ask, you can obviously make them eligible for us to read. It makes it an awful lot easier when we get a lot of questions in. And also be very respectful if we can, it's, it, you know, to the questions that you do ask that we can give a good reply to, you know. We're not here to start having a go at people or pulling people apart, so it is, if you can, just be a little bit respectful with the questions you do ask. What we will give you, or these gentlemen will, give you as honest an answer as we possibly can. And just while we're on the subject, if you look to my right down there, you will see all the Fans Fund boxes. Now, all the Fans Fund members can collect their souvenir boxes from the lads over in the corner there, so if anybody is uh, wanted to do that, you can go and see the two two guys, I think, behind the counter down there, Jordan the break. We're going to have a little bit of a chat with these two gentlemen. I'll introduce them, but they don't need any introducing, but I will introduce them to you very shortly. Um, and then we'll have a little comfort break around about 7.30, and then we'll come back and we'll go through the questions that have been, you have written out and asked, and the, the guys, again, will collect the questions up. We'll have a look at them and we'll put them to the the two gentlemen to my left. Right, first of all, I will introduce, obviously, to my immediate left is the Chief Executive of Wigan Athletic, Mr. Mal Brannigan. Thank you. Thank you. And obviously on our far left, our current manager, former player, Sean Maloney. Right, what we will do, we'll come to Mal first, because as you're sure, I'm sure you're all well aware, the and um, the accounts were published a, a few days ago for, for the football club, so I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions you might want on that. We're going to have a chat with Matt about that first. Also, the season ticket uh, prices were published as well, you know, for the coming, or for next season rather. So we, we were going to have a little bit of a chat about that and then looking a little bit ahead, you know, to what what's likely to be happening with the finances going forward. So good evening, gents. Welcome, both of you. And uh, first of all, Mal, we turn to you. Obviously, we can touch on the season tickets if we can first. They're now being published for next season, and there's obviously the difficulties with inflation and everything like that. So it's a slight increase. Yeah, no, thanks, Tommy, um, and good evening, everybody. I think what I think what we need to do probably is just give a little context first about where we've gone with season tickets. Um, the as Tommy said, the statutory accounts for the 21-22 season were published uh, a couple of days ago, and we put that story out this afternoon so that if people wanted to have a look at them ahead of the season's meeting, then they could do. Um, it just gives you that context of what it costs to run this football club and, and, and how tightly we try and run it, but at the same time, um, it, it is an expensive business. Um, and um, you know, from there, the, the, the results that we, we published were online with what we were budgeted, uh, which is, is that we're doing a good job from an executive perspective because it's it's what gets signed off by the board and everybody that I work with um, are, are cracking on and doing their job very well. Um, but at the same time, it just it just highlights where um, the investment that went into the club to make sure that we uh, we got our uh, or we tried our hardest and actually achieved it. We got our promotion from um, from League One up to the Championship. You can see what we needed to do. It's it's, it's well recorded uh, about how many players we had, about the work that we had to do. But I think behind the scenes, people probably don't see sometimes the amount of um, infrastructure uh, work that we did as well at the same time. So um, that just gives you a little bit of, of, of context on the numbers. Um, season tickets, um, I know there's been a couple of comments out there that about, you know, we've gone early, we don't know what division we're in. Um, we went we went the same time last year. So it was very, it's a very much, and when I first came in, when the, when the board were put together, we talked about, um, change in the way that this football club did a few things and one of them was that we would put season tickets out in advance of of a season finish um it's normal standard for the industry it's it's one of those where uh we try and give as much value to season ticket holders or we do we actually give the most value to season ticket holders they want to come and watch the game here um, and if you can afford to um buy your season ticket early uh, and at the earliest opportunity then you will get the best value but overall, what we have, there's, I suppose, really the, the main thing that we've done this year 
is that we introduced last year for the first time a four monthly installment plan. Uh, no management, no uh, administration charge, no interest charge alongside that. <coughs> and what we've done this year in light of uh, what's happening with the cost of living and, and, and everything else that's happening from, a, from an economic perspective is to try and extend that out as much as we possibly can. Um, if they you know, if, if, if people can, um, and, and we very much welcome it, if they can do their season ticket, you know, before the end of March and then take advantage of the, of the eight month payment plan, then I think that helps everybody out over that period of time. Um, so you can ask me another question. I'm going to stop talking in a minute. I was just going to say, does that, does that help you the time constraints of actually planning to bring, you know, your budget forecasts and, um, you know, if you know for a fact that you've got however many five, six, seven, eight thousand season tickets coming in, and that money is spread over a period of time, does that help you in the forecasting of what you have to do for running the club? I think it, it helps us from a, a PNL perspective, so from a budget perspective, not necessarily from a cash flow. So uh, what that means is that we'll probably, you know, we will ask um, um, the owner to to actually fund the same amount of money, but some of it a little bit earlier. Um, because we've, we've allowed the um, supporter to um, spread their payments uh, over the same time. You know, traditionally, it's been very much, let's get the cash in as quickly as possible, uh, and, and that will help. But this one, hopefully, uh, will work out for everybody's benefit. And I know you just mentioned there the owners, Mr. Al Jasmine, obviously, Talal. I mean, how much contact do you have with them on a day-to-day -day basis, or is it something that you, know, you have weekly Zoom meetings on? Uh, Mr. Al tells me um, generally when it's serious uh, <laughs> and generally when it's directed towards me about about the, you know, um, I need business running this way. Um, with uh, with Talal, uh, I I'm think I might, I, might get day, I might get a day off every now and then, but but you know generally and and it's very welcomed. Uh, it could be you know four, six, eight, ten times a day. Uh, so whether that's phone calls, whether it's texts or. Uh, I suppose really contact points would be about 20 to 30 days. And on the point of that, I mean, if you're looking at the accounts, and certainly I'm no financial expert, but it must be, I mean, if you've been very supportive really since they bought the football club, haven't they, you know, supporting it in what we want to do and obviously the success we had last season. Yeah, I mean, we, we just, as we published there, what, £7.7 .7 million loss for, for the promotion year. Uh, this year uh, will be higher and will be considerably higher. Uh, but again, in line with budget, again, in, in line with where we knew, um, again, there might be a couple of questions, so I'll preempt the answer to it. Uh, you know, uh, what kind of financial restrictions are we working to within the EFL? Um, when, the, when Phoenix 2021 first took on board the football club, it had to give a, uh, a projected plan for a number of years. And so, you know, we signed up to that in the eventuality of being a championship football club, what that would... What would, that, what would that look like? Um, I think really the only uh, uh, changes that we're going to see from there, it depends on what happens with the, with the white paper that the government have published the other day um, and the finances that might come through from uh, the redistribution model that is being talked about between the Premier League and the EFL at the moment. And given the possibility of a six-point deduction to both Birmingham and Reading, I suppose it's something you have to be very, very mindful of. I think you have to be mindful, but again, and this will probably come on to Sean at some point, um, we, we've got to look after ourselves first. So, um, you know, if we do everything within our control, see what we can do from, a, um, from our perspective, then we'll look by the end of the season to, to see whether there are uh, any other issues um, around that. But I think within, within ourselves currently in our conversations that we have, we don't discuss what might happen with any other football club. We just discuss what we can potentially do and how much support we can give to Sean and his team um, to make sure that we've got every chance and that he has every chance for making sure this football club stays a championship one by the end of the season. And looking forward now, you know, the, these these current year we're in now as we sit here now, the forecast for this year, have they been affected or are they likely to be affected looking forward? Uh, forecast now, we're, we're still very much online with what we what we uh, proposed to the EFL when the, when the club was taken over. Um, we, we knew roughly, um, the main thing that normally comes out of income when you work through divisions is the, the um, broadcasting redistribution and the redistribution from the Premier League. So you know that they work in three-year cycles. 
so we generally know um, how much that will be and what we're going into now 23 24 season next year um, that will be the end of that third year cycle so we generally so we're in the second year currently of, of a three-year cycle we know uh, approximately how much money is going to come in from there so we, we've got a fair idea of of what our income will be um, you've seen from the accounts the one anomaly that we have in our income is what comes through player trading um, <coughs> Uh, which is obviously something that, that we can do since we've been in, or that there's been a number of um, residual income streams that have come in as a consequence of other players uh, who have um, um, gone on to other clubs prior to Phoenix 2021 coming in there. I think we also put a note into the accounts that said that the um, Phoenix 2021 and therefore the football club have retained all the um, income streams from those deals that were done through the administration period. Right, Joe, so there you go. Food for thought for you all. So if you want any questions relating to what Miles discussed there now, if you write them down, and as I say, we'll collect them up and we'll deal with the questions and we'll put them to Mal a little bit later. But for now, thank you very much, Mal. Sean? Now, we're talking about a little bit about the football now, which is what we all love and what we're here for, I'm sure. Sean, very, very welcome back here to Wigan and... Uh, First of all, is it good to be back and how are you settling in? Uh, hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, settled in very quickly, very happy to be back. Um, some really familiar faces uh, from when I was here last time, um, lots of new ones, but um, I've loved the last uh, five or six weeks, yeah. Yeah, and are you settling in okay now? Is your family moving down shortly or are they already here? Yeah, they're, um, they're down now, so uh, I've uh, the wife and I've got a son, two-year-old son, so uh, <laughs> so he's keeping me busy at the moment, uh, early in the morning. But he's uh, I'm really glad that they're down. It uh, it just gives that normality uh, after work, as I'm sure everyone uh, feels exactly the same. So really glad they're down, and um, yeah, just ready to crack on with the work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as I say, we're all looking forward to it as well. Just a few things. Is it you know since you you were last year, obviously a great success as a player. Has it changed much the football club it's in your eyes in the how long is it now? So that nine years or so since you left? Lots of changes. I think um facilities have changed, so um the training ground's actually in a, in a lot more modern state um than it was uh, previously. Uh, so that's uh, I know they changed training grounds in between. Um yeah, there's a lot there's there's changes. There's some really good people that I've found that I didn't know previously. Um and then obviously, uh, yeah, the group of group of players that we have now, uh, and my roles change pretty dramatically. So, um, yeah, lots of changes, but there's there's still some that that feeling uh, around the stadium. The yeah, change rooms have definitely improved, um, but it's just that feeling and that soul still at the club. And the short period you've been here, is there things you'd like to change? You know, like the training ground, facilities wise. Uh, just small changes, really. Um, sure. Uh, Miles, uh, yeah, just some, some small changes just to make the training ground, I think, more efficient. Um, so that's al that's already uh, in, that's almost finished. Um, and then there's other things around uh, <coughs> certain departments that, that, that affect the first team that, that um, again, I want to just make efficient, make make better, so that the team and uh, that, that we put on the pitch in front of you is the best team that we possibly can. Um, but there's other things that are really good that I've uh, that were good back when, when I was here previously. The academy's uh, in a brilliant place. Uh, you already see now Charlie Hughes is, um, is starting to become a really, really important player for us. I think Tello, um, Tello took a big step forward, I think, in the last couple of weeks. So uh, I'm very lucky that I've come to the club and the academy's in such a good place. I was going to ask you about the academy and, you know, how you see them, any young players sort of coming in into the, into the first team reckoning. Obviously, it's a big thing for a club of our size to develop their own plays and of course you've mentioned you know uh, Callum is obviously is one as well Tello you know currently it's Charlie Hughes but you know there must be others and that must help with your plans for squad building yeah massively I think uh, the club's got a history um, long before uh, I was here um, and it will be here long after we have to bring through young players um, so yeah now that's something that, that I, uh, I changed when I came or at least I brought every uh, every week, at least two, two or three times uh, during the week, we'll have three, four. Tomorrow, there's six young players training with us. Um, we have to. It's a, 
we've got a history of it. Um, uh, there's others now in the reserve team already that I think are going to be close and then I have to start planning the squad for next season um, and you have to make a pathway for these young players. You have to give them an opportunity. They'll have good games, they'll have games that maybe it's less positive. But there's certainly players already um, below your Charlie Hughes, Tello, that I think have a real chance of becoming first team players for us. And, and will that affect your sort of recruitment process for what the players you maybe bring in to blend in with what you think is already here? Yeah, and how I see a squad is um, I have a certain number in my mind and then we have to then fill other spots with young players. I think that's the pressure that you, it's, it's kind of both, you have to support and there's a pressure with the academy to, to get your players at a certain level. Um, and then there's other players maybe in other positions, or sorry, other positions that you might feel are short. Um, and that's when we go into uh, recruitment. And again, our recruitment has to be better than anyone else in the any of our rivals and, and then if you get those two right then then you see a very good team you arrived obviously very late you know in january just a few days before the transfer window closed and didn't you give you much time really to do any dealings that you may have, might have liked to have tried to do but or, or time to assess the squad you know i think we brought in three players lots of zoma regic and uh, martin kelly who unfortunately picked up the injury yeah and then there was uh Tsunami as well wasn't it? I don't know. So, I mean, it, it's, has that been difficult for you coming in as a manager with that, you know, having to deal with what you came into? I think it was just a situation. I wouldn't say it was difficult. I knew the situation when I came in. Um, I think uh, I think, I think, think the, the market generally in those last couple of days can be quite difficult. Um, I think my job is to make sure that we, we don't have a window like that um, again. Uh, I was really... In, I know Miles sitting next to me, but worked extremely hard in those last two days to get the three players. I think Martin is just extremely unlucky um, to, to have the knee injury he did. But part of the reason we brought um, Martin Kelly to the club was uh, the culture, um, a real sort of drive to actually win games, no matter who we're playing. Maybe we'll speak about that um, a bit later in terms of uh, last night's game, previous games where we have to be going into games with a real drive and a real mentality that we can play in. Um, compete against any team. So it was unlucky that he got injured. Um, and then, for sure, there were certain profiles that I think would have helped the squad. Um, speed, 1v1 in that sort of final third, but uh, we just have to make sure the next window's even better than the window that we just had. So you obviously look at that in great detail, you know, what, what's in the squad, what we're lacking, as you say, you mentioned there, probably the lack of pace and the ability to, to run at defenders in one-on-ones and get the better of them. To be able to create the opportunities then in the box. Yeah, no. Look, I think uh, I think um, when I came in, I said we had to improve both boxes. I think you've definitely seen the defensive side of the team has, has improved greatly. Um, and then there's just there's positions and types of players that would help us in an attacking sense. And uh, um, and that's where, although I was only in for a couple of days with the window, worked extremely hard and got big support as well, not from just from Mal but uh, the owners. But literally, as soon as that window shut, there has to now be, and there is a real urgency that uh, in the next window, we have to be already prepared and we get the players that we need that would help the squad that we have, uh, particularly in those attacking areas. But um, yeah, in terms of coming in at that time, I knew the situation and um, I was very pleased with the support that the club gave me in those two days. I think since you have arrived, I mean, it, it's been very noticeable, the change in mentality, you know, around the club and the players and that. How hard did you have to work on that, or did you have preset plans how you could change that? I had an idea how to change it quickly, but I don't think, and again, you will see last night in other games, like that's continual work. So the mindset and the mentality of the squad, uh, I don't think that that work will ever stop. Um, we, we have to have the feeling that we, we go into any game, whether it's Burnley away this weekend, a big, big challenge. Last night, it, to me, uh, the uh, I get asked a lot of questions in the media generally before the game about teams' budgets, money they've spent, where they, how long they've been in the Premier League, or recently. Um, that mindset has to has to change. Um, uh, that we go in now every, any game, and look the seven games that we've had. I think you've now seen um, in every game we've had chances to, to either take points or win games, and that should be the case in every game. I was going to mention you. You know, when you came, you said you had to change both boxes, and you've certainly done that defensively. Um, and I'm sure the coaching staff you brought in have had a big say in how that's happened. 
but you know it, the difficulty in scoring goals is that which is obviously why we're in the position we're in is that I mean how do you get over that <laughs> it's just work I think um I, I would love to take all the credit and me and my staff about the how uh, the team's um, improved defensively but you have to you have to give the majority of the credit to the players it's the same players that were here in the previous um, I think the, the run was 16 17 games so the players have to take the credit and um, and part of that is attacking players. So uh, I'm sure you see now the attacking players are working extremely hard without the ball. Um, but now it's the same. It's now up to me and my staff to to give the players the confidence, uh, the right work and training, the right uh, instructions and specific opponents that we actually now are creating more chances. And look, last night felt slightly differently. We, we had two or three chances second half, but that if we take, we the, the result's different, I think. My job is to make sure that those chances are more and more and more. Um, and it doesn't matter to me where the, the opposition are on the table. We just have to keep working to try and achieve that. I, I remember a comment you made, and it, it, it sort of, you know, as a former player, it stuck with me when you when you arrived, when you said you're going to have to remind the players as how good they are. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a sort of balance because look, they, they won league, uh, league one last year, so they definitely have talent. They have a... Um, Winning leagues is not easy, so you have to remind them of the things that got them into this league. I think there's some things along with that. I think they have to start to believe that when they're at the very best, they are a good team in this league. I think you've seen it in the seven games. At no point in any of these games have I felt there's a big golf um, or been dominated by a team. <coughs> but we have to have a... We start from zero. Uh, we respect every opponent, so you'll hear me in the media, very respectful. But we're there to win the game. Um, I don't want to see any uh, any fear or trepidation in a game, um, whether it's zero zero, whether it's uh, we're winning one nil. When we're in a position where we have to leave it all out there, and and that's the work that I have to um, that, I'm, that it's a really big job, um, and that's what I'm continually trying to do each day is give the players the that sort of mindset that um, it is uh, we we have to leave it all out there on the pitch. I don't know all the old adages of the next game's the most important one game at a time, but as a manager, you must have to look at blocks of fixtures, particularly now as the games are going to start coming thick and fast, you know, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. And if players, have, you know, you, you feel might need a rest or do you target games, obviously, and I'm sure everybody's done it here, they look at the fixtures on paper and they'll say, well, we, we might have got something at West Brom. Burnley, we don't know whether we will do that, how good they're playing, although we've always got to believe that you can go there and get anything. But you tend to sort of look at blocks of fixtures and turn around and say, I'm going to rest people in these games, to make sure they're fresh for games that you might think you've got a better chance in, for want of a better description. No. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't. I think uh, that would just go against everything I've just said. Uh, no, look, I make a decision. There'll be some moments where, so... Uh, I, was, I was more thinking of players who've played a lot of games, whether you think they need, you know, just a little bit of a rest. Um, Did you want a rest when you were playing? <laughs> no. I said, well, no, that, that, you're exactly right, man. As players, you just want to play. You know, that's all you want to do. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, I mean, in my time, I'm sure some of the older supporters of will, will know, we used to play 60, 65 games a year, and when we were normally, we were working as well, so... But the games was what you what you live and die for. Yeah, I think um, look, I'm, uh, I think with the, the amount of information you need to get on players and the, where they are physically, I think I definitely take that on board. I think that's a that's a tool that you use. Or I think the biggest thing for me is what I see on the pitch. So whether I see them in a game and what I see in training is the, the two deciding factors. Um, I speak to the players a lot. I generally never ask. Uh, if they're feeling tired, um, it's what I see with my eyes on the pitch, um, and then I make the decision. There'll be certain games where I see a certain player that might hurt an opponent or the opposite. Um, some of our defenders I feel might be better suited to uh, certain players against the opposition. But honestly, at the moment, all I'm thinking about is the best team to win the game, the next game. Um, so we have Burnley, then we have Coventry. I'm not thinking one bit about Coventry at the moment. Right, we're looking forward to Burnley then. <laughs> um, obviously, they're flying high at the at the top of the league, you know. And it, how do you convince the players, you know, going into that game? I mean, have you got a, a game? Obviously, we don't expect you to share too much with us, but 
a game plan that you think can negate their strengths and obviously how we can get at them ourselves? Yeah, exactly that. Um, and then you have to give the players, look, it's, it's great me having a, a game plan and understanding something in, the, in, in my office, but uh, as long as it's clear for the players, uh, give the players two or three key bits of information. Um, and then the, the big thing at the moment, I think, is what I've just spoke about, is giving them a mindset and that, that we're, and, and we haven't got it right every game. Um, I think about the first half at Preston, we're winning 1-0, but I still felt the game was really there for us to go and impose ourselves. Yesterday's first half, um, that's that's the biggest thing. Give them two or three key bits of information, and then the big thing is the mindset. We have to go there, and um, from the very first whistle to the last, we have to we have to die for those points. And then, um, um, and yeah, that's the biggest challenge now. Um, there's been halves we got it right. I want to see it now from the very very beginning, and because um, in general the players have been, they've honestly been brilliant brilliant to work with. I've trained very very hard. Um, they've met every challenge that I've, I've put in front of them. The biggest thing now is getting them to understand and believe that when we're at our very best, we're one we're a very very difficult team to beat, and we will win matches. All right. Well, if you just look at obviously just last couple of minutes before we have a quick break. The last couple of games, Preston, and then obviously last night at West Brom, two again penalty decisions, which which disappointing from from Preston and Birmingham last week, which hits us very hard. You know they, they're the difficult things you can't control, aren't they? You know referees' decisions and that. But looking at last night, the most recent game, you know I I thought the first twenty minutes we quieted them quite well without ever really being too threatening ourselves. But you said you were really disappointed with the first half performance. Yeah, I was disappointed just with, you say, quieting them down. I thought that both teams uh, negated each other a little bit in possession. Um, yeah, but I just felt it was a game that started to drift. Um, and I don't want that. I don't think we're in a position we can do that. Um, I don't ever want to be in a position or feel that I'm happy with that. Um, look, we're gonna, we can win games but, and we can lose games, but there's certain, certain ways that if we're going to lose a game, um, I can accept. And... Um, and in look, in fairness, there was a big reaction from the players, um, and there has been big reactions. We went one 0 down at Bristol, and the reaction of the players is um, sometimes you have to make big decisions at half time. But it's um, yeah, it's just a disappointment. I wouldn't say a big disappointment because the players in general have been good. They've tried to do exactly what I've asked them. Just the next step, and I think in these games, they we we have to have an ur urgency now that we we can't waste any any minute on a football pitch now. It's um, as I keep saying, we have to leave it out there and um, we have to fight. We have to fight for every single point. And if we do that, then, look, uh, I, don't, I haven't spoke to everyone, but the, the belief and the sort of mindset around the club is definitely, I've felt, changed. That all of a sudden, I think we all feel that when we get this right and the team's at 100%, we've, we've got a chance here. And, um, and the players have felt it and I just need them to, to have that urgency that we can't waste any minutes on a pitch. No, I totally agree with you on all of that because it's like we said at the very start of the interview, the mentality around the club, both in and around the club, the players training ground and, and certainly the, the supporters that I've spoke to has changed. There is that belief that we can, albeit we all accept it's going to be very, very difficult, we can get out of this situation. Yeah, of course, it's um, it's a difficult situation that, uh, that we find ourselves in, but historically we've been there before. Um, there's no reason why we can't uh, we can't do it again, but we have to show that urgency. We have to, um, yeah, we just can't waste any moments. Um, there's moments we're going to win. There's moments we're not. As long as everyone in here feels that, and they, I hope you do in these seven games that, literally to the very last minute in almost every game, we've been fighting either to draw the game, see a game out, or get back, uh, or actually try and um, avoid a defeat. And that's been I felt that in every game we've been going to the very the very last minute and I hope that everyone else feels and sees that in this room. And we've got a few players out on loan, obviously Martin Kelly, which is a big disappointment in getting that injury. I mean, is Martin still around the club? Is he still coming in or is he just getting over his, recovering from his, his operation? No, he was in very early. I think he's, he's spending half the time doing rehab in, um, uh, in Liverpool. There's a rehab centre there in terms of for, for knees that's, uh, that's, that's really high level. So Martin um, actually did his knee like 11 years ago, the other knee, so um, he spent time there and he's going to spend half and half. Um, he's still not moving amazingly well, otherwise I'd want him at home and away games. But the more I have Martin in the building, the better. He's a real quiet leader. Um, and even the way that he's taken the surgery, 
uh, I know this, it like literally changed everything about his diet, everything. So that basically he can come back as quick as he can. And until then, I want him around as much as possible. He has a mentality that he's played at uh, a very, very high level for a long time. He, he goes into any game thinking we're here to win. And the more people we have like that, the better. And players that we've got out on loan, I mean, I take it you, you keep a, a general watchful eye on, on them players and their current form? Yeah, we have different, we have younger players, um, uh, we have Stones up at Ross County, um, and then we have more four senior players um, in the SPL as well. So, um, yeah, we, we have to. The Part of um, what we have to plan for next season, the strategy of that already has to be in place. And, and I have to make a decision on, um, and the club, we have to make a decision on, on the squad next year. So the more information on these players, the, the better, um, the easier it will make my decision. Okay, ladies and gents, you've heard from both the chief exec and the manager. I'm sure there's one or two things you might want to write your questions down on. But once again, if you can just write them down on the slips of paper, some of the chaps there will collect them and we'll be back in around about 25 minutes or so. So if you want to have a comfort break, get your drinks in. And we'll be back to deal with questions from the floor. Thank you very much indeed. Right, just to let you know, we ran around about 40, 45 slips of papers in we've collected. We've looked through them all. We've got about 20, 25 questions here for uh, the manager and uh, Mal to answer to. Um, some of them are duplicated, so we've tried to, because obviously the subject matter was the same for quite a few questions. So if your question isn't the one that's being asked, we do apologise, but we try to pick out the ones that cover, you know, the same subject matter as opposed to going over the same thing all over again. Okie dokie, so the first question out from Glenn Hitchin. Uh, I think this one's for you, Mal. Who made the final decision in bringing Colo Torre and his staff to the club? What made you think Colo and his staff were suitable to take the club forward? Nice to get the easy ones out of the way first. <laughs> I, thought, I, th I thought that one. <laughs> um, I just think my taxi's just coming. <laughs> uh, no, no, it, it, it is a, it's a serious. It's a serious because I think every time, I think what's key for whatever decision that we make as a board, uh, it's always done for the for the best interest of the club at the time and about what we know at that at that period of time. Um, Please be very respectful that uh, Sean's in the room as well, and also be respectful for the amount of effort that Colo and his team uh, put into the club while they were here. No, no one ever comes anywhere to fail. No one ever comes anywhere to 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 not get to uh, where they want to do within their career. And so it's um, it's one where we believed as a board that that was the right decision. Uh, that there was always a board decision to be made on this. So. You know, probably you know where we, where most people work uh, in life is that individuals can make decisions uh, and boards can make them as well. And you know, as we work, everything is collective. Uh, and then once that decision is made, then it's supported by everybody else. So um, I probably haven't answered it directly, uh, but I think you know what we do is that we make sure that every decision that we do make, uh, we make it for the benefit of the football club at the time. Now, what I will add on to that. Um, is that as we then saw results and we saw performances and we saw everything else um, run out, we also saw very quickly that uh, it wasn't going to work. So, you know, I think there's, there's also that point that says, right, let's make this another decision to make, let, let's make it very quickly. Um, you could say that we had the benefit of, of having talked to Sean uh, previously. Um, and interestingly enough, I spent some time with Sean yesterday and we talked about other conversations that we'd had previous to the interview as well. Um, and I'm now just delighted that I believe that we've got the right person, we've got the right team, we've got, we've got somebody who understands the culture of the football club, um, the amount of work that's been done over the last couple of years as, as regards getting this football club and its identity back on track. Um, hands up, you know, one, one decision was, was, wasn't the right decision. Um, but I think it's also important to then say, having identified that, we then try to rectify that as soon as possible. Um, and hopefully, we, uh, you know, I firmly believe that, that in Sean and in Graham and in Max and in Rob staying on and Daryl staying on and uh, all the medical staff and the support staff that are all around there, we've now got that spirit back together again. Um, and that was the one bit that we tried to, to rectify as soon as possible.
Okay, Glenn, I hope that answers your question. Right, and next question is from uh, Leslie Anderton. What is the ratio of season tickets to walk up pay per match? And ticket prices seem to be expensive per match, especially for families. We did touch on that a little bit earlier with the season ticket prices, Mal, but again. Yeah, the ratio, the ratio normally works out currently around about three quarters are um, our season ticket holders to, to where we are. So we've uh, approximately got seven and a half thousand season ticket holders. Um, we then know that we're going to get to around about uh, a 10,000 figure um, from home fans and then whatever uh, comes above that is going to be the away attendance. Um, we try to, we, we, we always try and, and look to make sure that um, <coughs> from a price perspective it's as reasonable as possible. Um, we probably didn't show that, um, you know, when we looked, talked about the accounts earlier, that we've tried to minimise the increase in season tickets. We've tried to absorb an awful lot of costs as well at the same time. Um, some of the costs that, that have increased at the football club in the last 12 months have been double digit. Um, and, and in their 20s and 30% uh, at times. So you can see from, from where we are is that it's, it, all those costs are definitely not passed on. And what we try and do is that we try and um, alleviate um, in other ways how we, how we manage those costs going forward. So whether, whether we put in some utility management um, perspectives, whether we put in and look at you know, some green energy initiatives as well, just to make sure that we, uh, we become one, more environmentally friendly. Uh, the stadium isn't uh, a very environmentally friendly stadium. Um, and two, that we just become much more aware of what our cost base is going forward. And uh, if we can do that, then I think it helps with the prices. But you can also see that the, the level of funding that's gone in recently from Mr. Al um, and, and that's physical cash that's, that's going in from that perspective. So, yeah, it's, it's around about three quarters of season tickets. Thank you, Doug. Right, uh, one from me, and I think you can touch on this one, Sean. No matter what league we are in next season, and with so many players out of contract, what is the growth plan for the playing squad and club in general? And are we bringing more youth through, i.e. Chris C? I think it's something we did touch on earlier, wasn't it? Yeah, we spoke about that. I think um, the, in terms of the... It's, it's, it's not a general rule, but the... the the average age of the squad, I think, has to come down. Um, there's different ways that you do that. Uh, and as I spoke about earlier, it has, there has to be key positions in our squad next year for, for youth players. I think Chris sees um, definitely we continues to perform uh, and he's uh, with us again tomorrow. And he has to be a big part of that. Um, and then his performances will dictate how much uh, minutes he gets on the, uh, on the pitch. Um, but in terms of uh, next season, yeah, there has to be, and there is a strategy of how the, how that squad looked, um, and it's made up of different different types of players. Um, and there might be a question later, but it's um, yeah, we have, we have to make a different type of squad. How I believe is the best way to win a game. I also want to make it enjoyable for for everyone here to watch, and try to be as attacking as we, we possibly can. Um, and that has to be a change from where we're at just now. Well, that brings on to the next question again. But I'll give you to answer. You can take your choices from David Naylor. Why was recruitment? Well, it's more probably for you. <laughs> Sorry, Mal, it's for you this one again. Why was recruitment? Fancy the hot seat. We're going to the first part. We tried to escape my way to that ending. Why was recruitment in the summer so poor? Do you feel that as a club we rested on our laurels and we are paying the price for it now? Um, I think you know, with, with with most of the questions that are probably going to come out tonight, there's a stock answer to kind of say we learn from these things. Uh, we generally believed that. The squad was, um, with a couple, with a few additions, was good enough to at least stay in the division. Um, from that perspective, we went on, a, on obviously on a very uh, poor run of form um, for a long period of time, um, and therefore, when you look back on it, you kind of go, right, did we, did we get some of that wrong? Did we? I don't think we got it one hundred percent wrong, um, and you'll probably get a perspective from Sean as regards the players. Uh, and their capabilities um, and the togetherness within that. I think it's really important sometimes that when you go up one division, you keep as much of that spirit together. Um, and that has to be a collective between the executive and the manager and, and the coaching staff and everybody else from there. So um, did, we get some, did we get some of it? 
yeah, I think you know you can have a look at the division where we are now and, and, and the work that we've got to get done to get ourselves out of this current position. Um, that probably illustrates that that we did get some of that wrong. Okay, no. right. So Dave Foster, uh, back to the to Liam a little bit. What's giving Liam a new three year contract, a smoke screen to distract from the late payment of salaries? No, definitely not. Um, what what intended there, and um, obviously we saw a lot of social media that 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 came out. Uh, as a consequence of that photo that was taken and everyone saying that, you know, look at the date on the calendar and look at the, uh, the training wear that, that, that Liam was wearing. That contract had been there for a number of months. Uh, we, hadn't, um, we hadn't announced it. Um, and there was, there was other reasons for that. Uh, it certainly wasn't a distraction at that, at that point in time. I, I think we've been, we've been more transparent than that. Um, in, in our communications generally. Um, so uh, I, can, I can probably second guess why that has been the case. I think the date was June or July um, on the calendar. Um, and, and obviously last year's uh, training wear, but no, it, it, uh, we nearly did uh, something the day after we came back from um, Bahrain in Manchester airport with myself and Liam next to each other and he's still wearing the same t-shirt. So, but just to kind of say, you know, that was, that was where we were, but no, we would have been. Uh, we are more transparent in our communications. Okay, right, question from David Moore. Was the 7.8 million loss anticipated and uh, this key in lack of player investment last summer, again, back to that sub subject, or was the then manager happy with his squad? I think we've answered the second part of that already. Yeah. The first part, uh, it was uh, budgeted, we knew where we were. Um, where um, on the 7.7 .7 million pound loss, um, actually we went probably went a little bit beyond budget because I, uh, you know, at the time uh, we went back to the board and asked them for some additional funds to uh, to recruit um, four players, five players in the January window of, of the promotion year, uh, and the board um, allowed that to happen. So, but it was all managed. There was nothing that kind of caught us out. Uh, in any way. Okay. Right. Question from Connor Hesketh. Um, this is for you. One for you, Sean. And I think we're more talking more now um, on social media because I don't think I've really heard this uh, around the stadium generally. But does negativity from fans have an effect on the players? Um, possibly. I think it's individual. Some players, yes. Some players, no. Um, I haven't really felt that. Uh, if I'm honest, I've not really felt that at this club. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I've felt it around the stadium, but whether or not it's more social media uh, criticism coming to play as well. Do you know what? I'm, I'm not on social media. Um, I think the players have to be aware that, um, that if you're on social media, and a lot of people are, then uh, you have to respect everyone's opinion. Whether you agree with it or not, I think that's just an individual's, um, that's up to the individual. Look, if you're on social media, you're gonna you win a game, it's gonna be positive. You don't win a game, it's 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 less positive. I think that's just um, I think that's just accepted. But um, do you see an effect on the players, or, or are you aware? Try to be aware of criticism that play, individual players get. Whether you know that how that affects them. Um, I haven't. I haven't seen part part of the job. We all know that as players, you know, you you expect it to a great extent, but. You know, you have to rise above it, but you know, as regards to confidence levels, I haven't seen that. Um, I think it must affect. I think, but that's that's every level. I think uh, even if you go up to Premier League, if you go down to League One, League Two, it's just, it's going to be the same for every player. Um, I hope uh, that you see whether we win, draw, or lose, we'll still come over to the support, the travelling support. We've had big, big numbers, um, and I think I said on one of my first days, no matter what happens, whether we win. Whether we lose or draw, we go over, we clap, um, because it's not easy to, to support a club, um, and we have to respect, and we're in it, we're in this together. I've asked the, the I've made a big, a big shout to the fans that they have to be with us. They have to see that we're giving them enough. So every game, no matter what the result, we head over there and show the appreciation. Whether and look, I know when we get beat, it might be a, a less of a response when we go over there, but. 
it's our job. We go over there and we respect that uh, the fans that came and we paid good money to come and watch us. Yeah, I mean, I I said many times to people that you can't under underestimate how important the support of the the, the fans are. It does get through to the players, doesn't it? Yeah, massively. Yeah, and the and the coaching staff and yeah. me. Um, uh, yesterday we get beat, um, but we still have to go. We still have to go to the support because it's your club, huh? and we feel a part of it. A lot of us now have history here, so um, yeah, we have to show that. Um, in the good moments, it's great to go over there when we win, but you have to go over no matter what the result is. Okay, right, John Evans, who says he's a layman on understanding of biz of finance and business finance in particular, but for Mal. On the seven million loss, have the owners stood that loss fully, or will they attempt to recover some or all of the loss from the club in the future? I think I might have answered that, but just to, to um, reiterate, so seven point seven million pound loss was a profit, uh, profit loss, so it wasn't actual cash. The cash that went in for the same period was eight million, um, and then you'll have seen also that uh, recently. Um, there was another eight million pounds that's put that's been put in. It's actually it's been put in over a period of time as loans, and then it's been converted into equity. So um, what you'll find is that when you look at the uh, balance sheet and the um, share capital, is that that's where that the funding will will be shown um, within there. So um, apologies, my it's probably a bit of a nerdy answer, um, but um, uh, in short the. Uh, the owners have funded all of that, 7.7 .7 million, and some um, above that sum. Yeah, and they will continue to do so. Right, uh, from Sean. Uh, if relegation does happen, are the manager and ownership committed to the continued financial support of the club? So I don't know who really wants to answer that. I mean, it's a. I knocked off when I knocked off when you said Sean. Right, so, so it's me again. It's re if relegation does happen, which is obviously something I'm sure the board have to consider and the, and the manager from the playing point of view for the recruitment, uh, are they committed? That, if relegation does happen, are manager and ownership committed to the continued financial support of the club? Well, I think you've already answered that in the financial yeah, support. But, yeah. but I think it's important to know that from, from a business perspective that we will, uh, because, because you should, we will plan for both scenarios. Last year, before we got promoted, I think that's possibly what they're trying to get at. You know, the, is the the scenarios are there if we stay up or if we do unfortunately yeah. get relegated, yeah. and the plans are in place. You know, from the playing side as well as the financial support of the club. Sean, you want to touch on that? Yeah, I think from my point of view, um, I don't I don't ever mention this to the players in terms of. Uh, the strategy for, for both paths really but we we have to I think uh, as I said earlier that sort of first of February has to be that has to be like the, the first day to the very next window but you have to have a strategy for both um, now if, I believe we have a big chance of staying up um, but as a club and we'd be doing you a disservice if we didn't strategize for for both paths really okay right we've got a nice question here now from Nathan Brown age seven I don't know if he's in the room is Nathan in the room or is it somebody's Hiya Nathan, how are you doing? Right, Nathan wants to know, he's a fans fund man, founder, and this is for you Sean, how will you motivate the team for Burnley after a defeat last night? It's a good question. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Um, do you know, I think for this Burnley game, and I need to, um, and this will happen tomorrow morning, I need, to, I need to get the players to understand how good a team they can be when there is aggressive and I and have a real intent to go and win the game. Um, I have to give them a belief that they're more than good enough to be in this league, but they have to be 100% aggression and a belief in, in us going to hurt any team that we play. So um, that has to be the two sort of key phrases tomorrow, that they believe and there's an intent. So um, if we get that, then, then we're going to give ourselves a chance to win that game and any game go forward. I hope that makes sense. What do you think, Nathan? Good. <laughs> right, well, unfortunately, I think this is, a lot of it seems to be around the accounts and the, the, the loss that has been announced. But uh, this is from Andrew. 
Uh, 7.7 million is a huge amount to lose for a club with a core fan base of six or seven thousand. How sustainable are our attendances going forward? And are the owners okay with losses year on year? Uh, I, don't, I suppose really any business owner wouldn't be happy with <laughs> losses going forward would. year on year. And if, I, if I sat here and said, yeah, they're all delighted, then, uh, then yeah, that wouldn't be transparency. Um, but I think, you know, as long as we can show that we're trying to minimise those losses um, every single year and we're trying to, so therefore, either, you know, uh, reducing costs where we can, maximising income where we can, looking to uh, see where our income could, could possibly come in from, um, then, then we are where we are. I think, you know, the, the club traditionally hasn't had an enormous fan base. I think it's, it's suffered from, from that for, for a long time. Um, it had the benefit of, of Mr. Whelan uh, and his funding for a long time as well. Um, and that probably masked some of the um, uh, the, the intricacies of, of, of running the business. But um, now the, 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 the ownership are very aware of, of what the funding levels look like. Um, as we just um, uh, talked about previously, that you know we, we will look at all scenarios all of the time, but but we will try and um, we'll, we'll we'll always try and minimise what those what the losses are going forward. Yeah, it's very difficult to try and increase the fan base, isn't it? You know, in the geographical position we are in, and yeah. that's a, that's always been an ongoing issue since you know since I've I've been here. Well. Yeah, I think I think one of the things that that um, we're uh, we're investing in is data and systems. Um, probably uh, we'll only get the benefit of when when well, Nathan's, Nathan's, I was just going to say, yeah. so when Nathan's <laughs> old enough to, to buy his own season ticket rather than um, somebody else pay for it. Maybe you do pay for it already for yourself. You do a paper round. <coughs> Not yet. Okay. Um, you know, and, and it might be so. So I think the benefit of that investment in data and systems will come to fruition then. Um, because they haven't been in place for a long time. So that's where we need to be a little bit smarter. Um, I think the, 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 the fans fund helped enormously as regards the engagement <coughs> with the supporter base. Um, and and I'm, I'm always uh, amazed and delighted at how successful that was. Um, and we will, we will keep on looking at initiatives that will bring um, fan, fans and the club close together, but also to see where we can continue to add value. Okay. There's always been a great connection between the, the fans and the club. Yeah, generally, you know, I just I've been here an awful long time, and it, and you know, I always find it amazing the connection there is between the club and the players, particularly. And as you say now, with the as it's getting a bit more transparent, which it, it has to be in this world that we live in. Yeah, I've, I've generally been welcomed into most rooms. Just just on that, I think um, I'm uh, I'm aware of my responsibility in that as well. Um, I know we rely on mal and there's um particularly around the accounts and things like that but i'm aware that i have a responsibility in terms of maybe giving you a team that maybe grows that number because i've seen big big support in a way already i want to see even more at home games and that comes with the team that i create so i'm very aware of that and i'm aware on the um the ownership i'm aware of obviously season ticket and every pound that people spend so that means that how we spend our money in recruitment means a lot to me and that means we have to be as deep in the process and signing players as possible so every player we sign i'm aware that it's the club that allows that to happen and the ownership and then yeah i'm not aware that i'm i'm responsible for, for those things that you mentioned and uh, and that mal has to answer the question i'm i'm aware that i'm a part of that as well right okay uh barry worthington's asked this one now graham barrow is a real club man and a great appointment in his view as your number two. Have you been in constant touch with him over the years or did you think of him when the board came calling? No, I've been in, um, uh, both, both really. So I've been in contact with him from the day that I, I joined here as a player and stayed in contact with him, uh, met him constantly. So, uh, and then it was, uh, and I really, um, it was a, a no brainer. I got some really great advice from uh, Sir Alex about Graham. Uh, so Graham used to work with Sir Alex, um, and that was the first question he asked about who your assistant would be. And I said Graham Barrow. So and uh, he gave it the, the thumbs up. So it was um, yeah, Graham's got some pretty high profile friends though. Um, 
he's a brilliant guy, um, really intelligent uh, in terms of tactically, and he's also got the mindset that I spoke about all, all day, um, or all night, sorry, that uh, that we have to now go into every game, and it starts with training, that we're here to win games, and um, he's been amazing in the appointment. Um, quiet? Quiet? He used to kick me all over the place when we played at Oxford. Well, he's quiet in, until when he feels he doesn't need to be quiet. He's, uh, he's still got that aggression, for sure. Yeah, that's a great question from Barry. Uh, right, question from Danny Taylor. Uh, not a direct criticism of, of Mal, um, but I question why, under three different managers, each with his own ideas, has tried a combination of the in the team. Yet yeah, Max has played all, every single minute. If I was another player in the squad, I'd question what made him so special to receive that treatment. I think that's maybe. I'm not sure. I've got to say it's not. not a direct criticism. Yeah, no, sorry, I'm sorry. Gonna pass it, it's so. Mike, bro. It's not a direct criticism of Max Power. I beg, beg your pardon. I thought I said Mal. But a, his question really is continued. In you know you can get done for bullying in the workplace. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I did ask that it was eligible to read into what the question, but yeah, it's to do with Max really, yeah, uh, sure. And it's can you know ever present in the team really. Definitely feels direct. Um, I think I think it's something I've inherited. Obviously, I come in and I um, and I judge, and I said this to the players from day one. I judge uh, who's going to play and, and what you do on the training pitch, and then obviously on the game. So I, I know there is some some noise around Max, but what I would say in the seven games that, that he's played, um, he's shown a mentality, shown a, a desire for the fight. Um, I think he's understanding the position more. The games that, or, or 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 what I'm asking, I think the games I've analysed before, he, he's he's he, he finds himself in every area of the pitch. I want him in a specific area, and so far he's been um, he's been good at that. I need more from him, um, as I do the whole team, but I know I've inherited the, um, there is some noise around him, but at the moment, my, my experiences has been positive with him, positive off the pitch as well. Um, yeah, I speak about Martin Kelly, he's very, like, a, a quiet leader. Max is slightly different. Um, we all lead in different ways, but, um, and not everyone's different. You need a different mix in the dressing room, but um, I kind of want to give everyone the, the Maybe a bit more under, understanding on Max. He's not going to be um, in his role, uh, particularly without the ball. He has to. He's very, very important. Um, and what we now need to bring is more, more and more on the ball. So, um, no, so far it's been positive. Him and Tehe, I think, have been very good together. Um, but we know we've got Naylor there as a as a really attacking option. I've used Asgard in that position. So, um, no, Max has been Max has been a positive. Uh, but we need more. Huh? All right. Right, a question from Daryl, another one for you, Sean. Uh, given time, what does a complete Sean Maloney Wigan team likely to look like? And in brackets he's got, we'd love you to be here for a long time. Oh, the feeling's mutual, um, and I get that feeling. Um, my team, uh, I, would, I wouldn't worry too much how much, or I'm not too worried right now how it looks. I want us to win as much as possible. Um, we all uh, want to compete. You want to see your team win. That has to be what I'm aiming for. And I know where we are in the league at the moment. I know what's happened previously. But I still have that burning desire that every time we play, I, I want our team to win. Moving forward, I want us to... You've seen teams throughout uh, the current history. I want us to be an exciting, really aggressive team where... Um, I'm not obsessed with possession. I don't need 60-70% possession in our own half. I'm not obsessed with that. I just want it to be a very, very attacking team. And I want it to be exciting. Um, but in the end, I want us to win. Okay. Uh, this is one for you, Mal, I think, from Nathan. Are there still plans to hold concerts at the stadium? And I think on, on the basis of that, have we got plans to utilize the stadium in other ways to bring in revenue i presume yeah we're, we're look, we, we always look at it um our challenge is uh somebody's found a friend there uh our, our challenge is, is the window that we have for the uh, pitch renovation 
every single year. You know, we, we, this there's a this, the stadium is used for two sports, so that cuts that down an awful lot. We we have to make sure that the ground staff are given the maximum opportunity to get a pitch right for uh, <coughs> for Sean and the team. Um, and as a consequence of that, is that uh, when you would normally have the touring of, of any concerts uh, and any acts that um, we, we've either got renovation or we've got um, the Warriors play. So the, um, we were asked, did we, uh, could we do something at the beginning of August this year uh, from a band? And, and it's just not feasible. So, you know, if, if we can do it and it doesn't impact on, uh, on, on sport, because it is a sports stadium, then uh, then we will look at it, and it will be a conversation that you know we'll have amongst ourselves to see whether uh, financially um, the rewards are greater than any potential um, downside from there. But um, if if we can, then we'll look at it. We're also looking at you know how we can improve fan engagement on a match day and and, and the match day experience, and some of that might be that we will have smaller concerts or or, or kind of you know entertainment that goes on. Um, uh, pre-match, maybe post-match, um, but I think if we're gonna, if we're looking at having any of the large, large concerts, then we're, we're fairly well restricted in what we can do. Okay. Uh, right. Well, there's nobody put a name to this one, but it's, it's something that has been asked on a, a few of the slips of paper. Um, I, well, I don't know who can answer this really. Will we be signing any of the January signings, i.e., loans, permanently in the summer? I suppose that's you really, Sean, isn't it? Your view on the players, you know, all of it. is it that going to be a time to do that at the end of the season? Um, I think those questions uh, with, with Omar obviously known from uh, Arsenal, um, Sinani from, uh, from Norwich and Martin's obviously just had a, a big injury. Um, I think something asked me actually in between. Uh, I would love to have uh, Martin here for as long as possible, but you have to respect he's still got another year. Um, I think those particular cases we probably have to look at at the end of the season. What I would say about all three, they all they were all desperate to come here. So Omar uh, pushed hard to um, to finish his time in Rotterdam. Uh, Daniel, uh, yeah, drove drove across on that last day um, from Norwich, um, and Martin made a big push to come here. So um, they all want to be here. Um, but those particular cases, I think we have to. Um, because of their situations, we will decide that in the summer. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy that they're here. This is a little bit Sorry, of a fun thing. Just, just to add to that, the the other ones that came in January, you know, we'll, we will look at those contracts as well. There are so there are clauses in those in those um, deals that we could potentially, um, if if it's right for Sean and his team, um, we potentially have a look at that. Right. This is a little bit of a follow up to that from Simon Humphreys. Uh, what is the recruitment process this season and last a lot of players seem to be signed that the, that the manager didn't use now does the manager pick the players or has the recruitment team been choosing them and he's got in brackets there eg scully mcgrath fletcher and shinny or is it a, is it a junk decision i suppose is the question how much say does the manager have in the recruitment of players i think if you have a bit, um you have a look at the historical but uh, I think that's that's in the past. So you know we, we should only now concentrate on on, on how we're going to move going forward. Um, manager always has to say. Um, you, you know you, you look at, at what you're trying to do, and I'm sure Sean will probably elaborate on this a little bit. But what are the key bits within uh, within any recruitment process is character, finance, playing ability. You know, and then from then onwards is the, is the, is the character of the player itself. But that but final say on any player with a final recommendation on any player has to come from the manager. Yeah, I think um, I think on that, I think uh, I completely agree. And I think what I want to give the club is a, a deeper process with recruitment so that when I'm signing a player, we understand all those things that, that, that Mal's speaking about. And we have even more information so that when we, when we sign them, uh, we really minimize the risk of, of exactly what you're saying. We sign players and, and they don't play. Now, Sometimes if you, you sign players and, and there's players within your squad then go to another level, um, which is competition. That's what happens. Some players will see a player in their position and they get to a higher level. But we want to minim minimise the risk as much as possible. Everything to do with the finances we've just spoke about, the support that you give us. Um, 
I, I want to, uh, uh, and we will get a, a really um, in-depth, uh, deep sort of process on on, on our signings. We have to. It's um, um, it's so so important. Um, and and I want. I'm really specific on the type of players that I want in certain positions. Again, how I want the team to look. So um, but we need to make those. Uh, we need we need to make the recruitment department as strong as possible. Um, because it, uh, it makes such a huge difference. Right, well, the next two questions touches on both of that, so I'll read them out and then if you want to add to it. First one's from Will Patterson. What lessons has the club learned from last summer's transfer window to improve the business we do this summer? And then also, sorry, also Danny Taylor's asked, from a manager's perspective, what is the squad lacking? You know, you said you've done your research, so, you know, are, are we ready to move forward? you know, with plans for the future. Yeah, in terms of, um, what was that last part, sorry, it was regarding... From a managed perspective, what is the squad lacking? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I need to be quite careful on how, on the words I use, because, uh, look, we, we've still got games now, and I'm going to, like, the squad is very, very important, and I have to give them the confidence that they, um, and, and I believe that we've got, we've got players that are going to make the difference um, and win us games. I think, uh, in terms of positions, I think, it would help the current squad. I'm very clear on what we need. Um, um, and already, like I said, that first of February was uh, I was extremely motivated to to make sure the next window we have a squad that looks a lot um, or looks different or a lot different in certain positions. Uh, but I'm really clear on what I want in these positions, and um, uh, you know, already already in that process. I think that's covered it. I think that kind of, you know, we talked about recruitment process in the last question before that. So what, what's that like going forward? Sean, Sean covered that. Okay, right. Well, that more or less covers it. We've got one more question to ask um, and then we'll allow both Mal and Sean to have the, the final say. But this is from Paul and he apparently he's asking from a friend and a season ticket holder called Steve who lives in Germany. But he's asked me to ask, We've got a dance floor here. Can Sean Maloney do the hokey cokey and turn, <laughs> and turn us around? <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, I'll definitely need a few more pints. Uh, but um, no, when we stay up, I'll uh, I'll be back and I'll answer that question uh, uh, in person for sure. <laughs> and we look forward to that. Right, we're just coming to the end now, Mal and Sean. So, Mal, is there anything you want to add to the evening and finalise your thoughts? Um, just uh, continue. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your patience. Um, uh, I think you've seen that when we believe uh, we're doing the right thing, we'll carry on doing it. When we believe that we need to change something, we'll do that and we'll try and do that as quickly as possible. Uh, and I know that probably you know other fan bases would have would have moved away from us probably a little bit quicker. You guys have stayed with us, so, so please do that for at least the rest of the season. Give Sean and the team um, every bit of support you can do. It's going to be key um, for, the, for the remaining games that we have here, um, particularly at home. Um, and um, I've been asked by uh, the sports club about, you know, putting together now uh, a fans panel. It might be a better term for that, but a fans panel about listening more to... to to, to the fans, um, I'm all up for that. We've probably had our head down for, for two years and we're coming up for breath. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that that closer engagement. Um, you probably want to be involved in season ticket pricing <coughs> and shirts and everything um, for next season. So, um, but uh, yeah, but just genuinely, thank you for your support. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, I kind of echo those um, those words. I think a massive thank you for the support. Um, for me personally, a massive uh, thank you for the feeling that you've uh, given me since I've came back. Um, it's felt like a big surge of positivity from both players, the support, the connections there. Now, this isn't the time to sort of take the foot off the gas. It's almost I need more. I need the players need more from me. Um, I, I need more from the players. And we definitely need even more from the support. So a massive thank you for coming tonight. But it's, um, yeah, we go again this weekend. And um, uh, please don't underestimate the support that you give us in every game, no matter what the situation. Um, we need to give that to you. But, um, yeah, we're going to fight like hell to stay in this league. Thanks a lot. Thank
And we always have things like that. Well, of course, uh, you've done a good job this evening, haven't you? Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Right, okay, ladies and gents, as these guys have said to me, like, it's great to see you all here. We, we do have these forums on a fairly regular basis, and I'm sure they will carry on in the future. And we try to give as many honest answers as we possibly can to the questions that you put to us. Um, so all, all I can say is, and reiterate what Sean has said, that as a former player, I know how much it means to the players and how much they care for the support that they do get from you guys. And it, it can never, ever be underestimated what value you bring to this football club. Right, it's a horrible evening. Those who would possibly want another drink, please do so. But on behalf of Mal, Sean and myself, thank you for attending and have a very safe journey home. Good night and thank you very much.